Hello everyone, welcome back to our Tinkercad tutorial. Today we'll be looking at for loop part 2, where we'll be mixing for loop with variable to make something that is slightly different than what we have done so far. So without further ado, let's go to our new circuits. So remember that as soon as you go into the new circuits, you will need to change the name to exercise 4.5. Then afterwards, put in your Arduino Uno and the breadboard. Then connect the GND, which is the ground. Now what I will do is that I will use two LED okay, of different color to simulate that one of them will go from dark slowly to bright and then go from bright back to dark while the another one doing right exactly the opposite. Okay, so let's put in two LED, one of maybe red color and then another one maybe you can use blue color. Okay, now put in their resistor of 200 ohm. Duplicate that, and then after that, remember to just ground them. Okay, after grounding, we, what we will need to do is now I want uh, because we want to need uh, we want to do the one that is for the brightness, so we'll need to connect it to any port that has PWM. So for example, I can connect to number nine over here, and then another way I can try number six. Now that's all for the circuits part, we can now go into the coding bits. Now for the codes, we will need to use for loop. Okay. So when we put in the for loop, remember that it will create a variable called i. So this will be for brightness for one of them. So we'll do count up by 1 from 0 to 255. Now we'll need another number that will do exactly the opposite the opposite so what we will need to do is that we can actually use another variable you can actually do another calculation directly in the code or you can use another variable as well so let's say if I use another variable okay J and then each time when I change it will change J as well and how do you do the exact opposite is you can go to max okay and then use the first one which is the basic calculation and then use minus okay set this one to 255 minus i so what will happen is that when i is just starting which is zero j will be 255 minus zero which is exactly 255 when it goes slowly over to maybe 60 then it will be 195 for j when it's 120 it will be 135 for j and then until you reach the maximum which is 255 then j will be zero so it will be exactly the opposite of I. After that, we'll need to change the LED brightness. So we'll need to use the one that has set pin to various number and then change it to 6 and 9. After that, we'll need to put variable. So let's say I put I for this one, J for this one, which means the number 6, which is blue color, will go from dark to bright, whereas for the red one, it will go from bright to dark okay but after that what will happen is that we'll need to put a way so let's say because last one we used 0 0.02 so maybe we want it to be faster so we use 0 0.01 so what happened after we completed this is that this one will go from dark to bright and after that will suddenly go back to darkness and then go to brightness again so we don't want that. We want it to gradually go to darkness as well. So we'll need to duplicate this whole block. Okay. Then now change it to countdown from 255 back to 0. So in this way, it will go from like, um, the blue color will go from dark to bright and bright back to dark. And then the opposite for the red. Another thing we need to add in is we need to put weight between the count. Okay. What this thing will do is that when it reaches the bright maximum brightness and then I want to reach the darkest, we'll be able to pause for a small bit of time so we'll be able to clearly see that it has already reached the maximum. So let's see how it will look. <coughs> now as you can see, once this one reaches maximum brightness, this one will be totally dark. Okay, and then they'll wait for a small time um small while and then it will do the opposite. Okay? So this is a demonstration of how you can use 
for loop to n variable to change the value of two different LED. When you change it to block plus text, you can see that this is a for loop. Okay, but this is not exactly what for loop can. Uh, not only what for loop can do. For loop can be used for a lot of things more than what we can do here. The only thing is that when we are restricted to only block from Tinkercad, there are lots of things that we can't really do. Okay, but if when you look at this text, we can actually change it into text mode. Then after that, we'll be able to do much more than what the block constraint us to do. So that actually for loop can be used for something that are far more powerful. Okay, if you have chance to learn it in the future, then you will be able to truly understand what for loop can do. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and I will see you again in our next video. Thank you.